A scary ordeal for two Lexington women, the victims of carjackings outside their homes. Now police are trying to figure out if the crimes are connected. Big temperature drop across the area today. As the old saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. I've got Arctic attacks lining up just ahead. Cases of measles are breaking out across the country, but not in this state. I'm Omar Villafranca in Jackson, Mississippi. Coming up, how this state has managed to stay measles free for more than 20 years. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. A busy Central Kentucky road is closed after a tanker truck overturned. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. The crash happened just about 45 minutes ago in Clark County on Kentucky 627 near the Bourbon County line. Emergency crews tell us the tanker was full of butane. The road is closed right now in both directions. WKYT's Jordan Valines is live at the scene with the breaking details. That's right. We're told the accident happened around 3.15 this afternoon here on Paris Road. Now, if you take a look here behind me, you can see right behind that white semi truck, there is actually a tanker that has flipped over on its side. At first, it was believed the tanker was leaking fluid, but state police just called us back to inform us they've checked the vehicle and there is not any liquid leaking from that tanker. Now, police say the driver should expect this portion of Paris Road to be closed down for at least the next hour or so as they work to clean up the tanker and, of course, get it towed away. Now, we have just learned that the driver was injured in this crash. We're not sure exactly how serious his injuries were. Were, but we are definitely going to stay here on scene and bring you the latest information in the next half hour. Live in Winchester, Jordan Veline, WKYT. After a warmer weekend, much colder air is back in the bluegrass. We started today with temperatures in the 50s. This afternoon, Lexington is right at freezing. This is a live look at downtown. It could be a sign of things to come. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast. Chris. Exactly right. Dealing with a lot of low clouds. It's kind of ugly out there this afternoon. And Jennifer, that temperature drop has been impressive since where we were early this morning to where we are now. You want to see some ugly? No, I'm just talking about your friendly weather dude here. I'm talking about what is going on outside. Look at the low visibility. A lot of low clouds out there. A little fog, some drizzle and some snizzle showing up. That's a little bit of some light snow slash drizzle. 31 degrees in Lexington winter coming at us from the north northwest at 13 miles per hour. 21 degrees. That's what it feels like. 29 actual temperature showing up into northern Kentucky right now. Look at southeastern Kentucky. Harlan 50 degrees, yet it's 29 into northern Kentucky, 31 for the Lexington area. That uh, cloud cover, the, or I should say the temperature drop associated with the low clouds, the drizzle, and the fog continues into southeastern Kentucky. Compared to the same point yesterday, we're nearly 25 degrees colder than our Sunday. Life first alert defender picking up on still some light showers in the southeastern Kentucky, but what it's not picking up on is the drizzle and the snizzle. It's just too fine to be detected, but a lot of clouds that are out there could produce some snow showers and flurries as we go through the evening and the overnight. But the big weather story over the next week, Arctic attacks that are lining up, Jennifer. We will track those and the increasing odds for some snow when I come back in a few minutes. Two women carjacked at gunpoint in Lexington within 30 minutes of each other. Now police are looking at whether the crimes may be connected. The first carjacking happened at a home on East Loudon just after 3 this morning. Then, about 15 minutes later, on the other side of town, another carjacking. This one at the Farrington Apartments on Laredo Drive. WKYT's Mark Barber talks to one of the victims in our top story at 4. The woman whose car was stolen on the Rado Drive says she is still very shaken. She says when she pulled into the parking lot here at the Farrington Apartments around 3.30 this morning, three men armed with guns surrounded her car. The woman says she has seven children, so when they put a gun to her head, all she could think about was staying alive so her kids would still have a mother. She tells us they looked in the car for her purse, forced her to empty her pockets, and then grabbed her car keys. About half an hour later, police say they found her stolen car abandoned on the other end of the apartment complex. Investigators say it's rare to have two cases of Grand Theft Auto in a day, but they say another car was stolen on East Loudon. In that case, police say when a woman stepped out of her home around 3.15 this morning, she was approached by two juveniles with guns. The carjackers told her to empty her pockets before they took the keys to her black Ford Ranger. I am very scared for my granddaughter and other women that 
trying to make a living and want to be safe. And this is not a safe environment for these things to be happening. Police say even though the two cars were stolen just 15 minutes apart and the description of the carjackers is very similar, it's still too early to say if the two cases are connected. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Police tell us they still have not found the car that was stolen on East Loudon. Three people are in jail this afternoon. Police say they left a woman to die and didn't call 911 after she overdosed. Amy Kane, Harvey Kane, and Joshua Ryder are all charged with reckless homicide. The Knox County Sheriff's Department says the three broke into an abandoned house for copper. When deputies caught them, they say someone at a home next door needed medical attention. A woman was taken to the hospital where she later died. On WKYT News at 5, why police believe the suspects did not try to help the woman. We're working on a number of other stories for WKYT News starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a house fire in southern Kentucky. Firefighters spent most of the morning putting out the fire at a home on Barberville Street in Corbin. The home is split into apartments. The News Journal reports a couple and their son heard an explosion in their kitchen and escaped just before that fire started. Someone living in a downstairs apartment also made it out. Out safely. A Southern Kentucky teenager is recovering after he survived a fall from a cliff. The 15 year old slipped and fell while coon hunting near Lake Cumberland in Pulaski County last night. The fire department says the teen slipped on some leaves, fell about 20 to 50 feet, then fell another 100 or so feet. The rescue took more than four hours. Coming up on WKYT News at 4 30, you'll hear what made the rescue so difficult and what firefighters were working against. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. That was story making headlines across the nation at four. With more than 120 cases of measles now confirmed in 14 states, the debate over vaccinations is intensifying. Mississippi has some of the strictest immunization laws and the highest vaccination rate for children. But as Omar Villafranca reports, some parents in Mississippi believe the state's laws are too restrictive. Before children in Mississippi can go to daycare, they have to have their immunizations. Because they could come in here and have some virus and then it'd be too late. Mississippi is tops when it comes to childhood vaccinations. 99.7% of kindergartners have their shots, about 5% above the national average. That's largely because Mississippi is one of only two states that does not allow exemptions for religious or philosophical reasons. If measles comes here, it can't spread here, and unfortunately that's what we're seeing in other parts of the country. Child care workers also have to be up to date on their vaccines. If they've never received a measles shot, they have to get one to work around the kids. But not everyone is proud of Mississippi's high vaccination rate. Lindy McGee chooses to homeschool her children rather than vaccinate. We believe that parents should have some options according to their unique child. McGee is co-director of Mississippi Parents for Vaccine Rights. She says she is an anti-vaccine, but she wants flexibility on which vaccines to get and when. They can just get one shot at a time. And then that way if there is a reaction, they can see what it's to. McGee believes there's still some risk, even though health experts agree vaccines are overall safe and effective. In Pearl, Mississippi, Omar Villafranca, CBS News. West Virginia is the only other state that does not allow vaccination exemptions on religious grounds. Mississippi requires vaccinations for measles, whooping cough, polio, hepatitis B, and chickenpox. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Wall Street starting the week on a down note. The Dow dropped 95 points to close at 17,729. The Nasdaq lost 18 and the S&P 9. Wells Fargo will now allow customers in its rewards credit card loyalty program to redeem their points at the ATM. They can get either cash or credit to their accounts. The bank says it's the first major financial firm to give customers this option. Americans are getting more generous. The Chronicle of Philanthropy says donations increased by 27.5% in 2014. One of the main reasons for the jump is a $1.5 billion gift from Bill and Melinda Gates. 
You'll have plenty of money to give to charity if you win the next Powerball jackpot. It's now up to $450 million for Wednesday night's drawing. No one matched all the numbers in Saturday's $380 million drawing. Powerball's last big jackpot was last February at $425 million. The biggest in Powerball history, $590.5 million, was won in 2013. Powerball tickets are $2 each. This is an exciting day for some Eastern Kentucky students. They're getting the gift of music thanks to a generous donation. Deanne Stevens out and about today with Halfway to Hazard and Troy <laughs> Gentry, who are part of this awesome project. She joined us now from Jackson City Schools with more. Hey, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here in Breathitt County where it's a very exciting day for the students here. Check out these beautiful instruments all donated to the school. This is like the ninth school, Jackson City Schools, by these guys here. Check it out. We got Troy Lee Gentry of Montgomery Gentry, Chad and David of Halfway to Hazard, and Mr. Yon, Principal. This is a big day for you, sir. It certainly is. It's good that one, it's good to have Chad back in Breathitt County in Jackson, where he's, where he's from. Good to have him home. But uh, the program that they're doing here is fantastic. Chad was telling me uh, you guys have a special relationship in that you used to be a music teacher. You're a huge inspiration for him. How cool is it to have him back here and the donations for the school and what it's going to do for the kids? Well, the donations are, are the fantastic part. You know, anytime you see guys like this go out, make it big, come back and give back to their community, it's fantastic. As far as being inspiration, I don't, I don't know. I think Chad was inspir inspiring to me when he was growing up. He was uh, always a good kid, always uh, doing the right thing, and it seems like he's, he's keeping that going on, so it's fantastic. All right, Chad and David, halfway to Hazard. Pretty cool being home? Absolutely. Are they talking about the right Chad? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was thinking, but I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's great. It's, it's always great to come to East Kentucky. Yeah, you guys have been making the rounds. You were in Perry County earlier this morning mm -hmm. making donations to those schools. This is the ninth school. Talk about giving back to your very own community. It's powerful. I mean, this is exactly what we set out to do many years ago with, uh, with the Crocusville event that we do, the charity, raising money, and we want to put instruments back in kids' hands and uh, because Kentucky has such a huge history of wonderful musicians and songwriters and you know one of these kids could be the next uh, Montgomery Gentry or the next Patty Loveless or Dwight Yoakam or whatever could be right in amongst us right now and giving them an opportunity by giving instruments to these band directors and, and schools is it's just really special for us. And David, this was all done with money raised from a very fun event that you guys put together. It's it's fun. It's 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 kind of selfish for us. I mean, we, we a few years back we were standing on top of a hill to decide, trying to decide what kind of charity thing we can do, and like let's do some music, and let's write some ATVs, and <clears throat> let's get our let's call our friends <laughs> into yeah. coming down and doing it with us. But it, no, it's it's a great thing. I mean, it's taken on a life of its own. It's it's got bigger, way bigger than me and Chad. And uh, with all the volunteers, and it wouldn't it wouldn't happen without all the donations, volunteers that we have, and we're very lucky to be in East Kentucky, where people will give their time, their blood, their sweat, their tears, their money to, to help kids and, and to get music back in schools. And they love you guys. They're here rallying around you, supporting you. Troy Lee, uh, you get, you've been a part of this. You've been a part of the fun, but you're also, you also have the opportunity to be a part of that giving back uh, sector. Talk a bit about that and what it's been like for you today. Well, it's been wonderful coming back up here with Chad and David, you know, great buddies of ours. And Kentucky, Kentucky blood right here. But you know, I, I grew up, my musical start was in school too. I played saxophone in the sixth grade and played through junior high school. And it transitioned to the guitar and talent shows and to where it's gotten to me now. So coming back and helping them bring uh, music and instruments to the school that helped inspire me is exciting to see, like Chad was saying, what could come up next out of Kentucky because of these instruments right here. Well, it is so cool being with these guys here in Eastern Kentucky. Coming up at 450, more on those instruments and more from the kiddos here at Jackson City Schools. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. It's time for better living, health education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Adding some spice to your diet may help keep you from gaining weight. Researchers in Wyoming fed chili peppers to mice already on a high-fat diet. They found that an ingredient that gives the peppers heat stimulated the mice's metabolism and prevented obesity. Researchers in Australia asked almost 1,000 people what they were doing before their back pain started. They found most of them had done physical tasks in awkward positions. Being distracted or fatigued while doing activities also increased back pain. The study also found the pain was the highest between 7 in the morning and noon. Wireless technology in a car can be a huge selling point, but it may also put drivers' privacy at risk. 
A report from Massachusetts Senator Edward Markey found that most automakers are not doing enough to protect drivers. The report finds hackers can track where drivers have been and could even take control of a vehicle.